All right, guys. Sorry I'm late. Uh, going solo tonight. Buddy Sanji has the week off. Uh, didn't think he had much to talk about in New Mexico. So I'm going to get to many of your questions as possible tonight. I think we're going to talk a good bit of recruiting. We can talk the 2023 LSU football schedule that's been released. Talk about how this LSU football team absolutely proved themselves the last weeks. And I think a lot of people uh, that uh, follow LSU and, and fans that feel the same way after seeing this team do a lot better, uh, at, particularly uh, the fourth quarter against Mississippi State. So we've got all that to talk about tonight and much more. And so, um, of course, we're brought to you each and every week by Pride Roofing, the official roofing company of TigerBait.com. And uh, we couldn't do this show without them each and every week. So thanks to Mike Faraday and Alex Martinez. We'll talk about them a little bit more uh, later on in the show. But I want to get to as many of your comments tonight as possible. Guys, do me a favor. If you're enjoying the show, absolutely, please hit the like button uh, and spread the word. Um, I, I think uh, you guys have really helped this channel grow. Uh, the, the amount of growth that we've had on this YouTube channel is absolutely amazing. And, um, and of course, you guys have also helped Tiger Bait our website grow in the last month with uh, record numbers. So go to, if you're not already a subscriber, uh, go to TigerBait.com. You can try us out for $1. And, of course, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell right here on YouTube. Uh, we've been loading the, uh, our YouTube channel up with content uh, almost daily. And we've got a lot more coming your way. We've got fall baseball around the corner. I ran into Dylan Cruz. Uh, out in the parking lot uh, of the football facility, uh, he is, was heading in uh, to the nutrition center to get some dinner. I think that starts first week in October. So we're going to have some fall baseball coverage. We've got uh, the beginning of men's and women's basketball practices. So we're, 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 we're extremely busy at Tiger Bait. We're about to be a lot busier. So um, go ahead and hit the like button, guys. Very much appreciative. Uh, Edward O got to Crabs. Let's go. The best of the business. Sure hope the legend Buddy Sanji has a late day tonight. He's out tonight entirely, Ed O, but he'll be back next week. And uh, we'll be glad to have Buddy back sitting across from me. Uh, Delton Doucette rolling in from Blake's show. Let's keep this rolling. Absolutely. Uh, Jeff Zimmerman, thank you all for the scheduling. I got to see Carter Blake and you guys back to back. Absolutely. Uh, I, I try not to uh, make sure we overlap with those guys and everybody get – get their, their time slot to, uh, in. Um, Sean Wire, Daniels will undoubtedly win games by himself this season in college. A running quarterback can take you further than the NFL. Guys, I, I, I keep, you know, if you watched our, our post-game show and uh, have heard me on this show the last couple of weeks, what Jaden Daniels does to a defense is absolutely devastating. You can have LSU shoot themselves in the foot and, um, you know, have a false start penalty, be first and 15, which is the same thing that Joe Burrow was lamenting for the last two or three days as to why they're now 0-2, the Bengals, is because they were shooting themselves in the foot. And, and, and like Joe Burrow said uh, with Cal Hurd today and in, in his presser, uh, in the NFL, if you're at uh, first and 15, um, it's very hard to, to overcome. And it's no different in college football. And so, but what Jaden Daniels can do, it can be third and long, and, you know, I don't know what his third down conversion rate is. I keep wondering if someone's going to uh, put that together. Uh, maybe somebody has and you guys can alert me to it. Um, but, I, I mean, it sure seems like 19 out of 20 times. I don't care if it's third and 11, third and 13. Uh, you know, he's going to get in passing formation. And if he doesn't see something he likes, he knows where the marker is. and He's going to get a first down for, for you most of the time. So, uh, that, that's absolutely a backbreaker for defenses. And D Jaden Daniels is uh, absolutely a stud. He was very, very good today uh, on Paul Feinbaum's show. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see him get some publicity. Feinbaum tried to get him to uh, act, uh, ask him questions about Arizona State and why did he leave and does he talk to anybody there and his thoughts on uh, them uh, making a move on Herm Edwards and, and, and he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't touch it. So uh, good on him. Uh, he's already a, a seasoned pro with uh, dealing with, it, with the media. So um, I think, look, um, New Mexico this week, we'll see how Nussmeyer performs and whether Walker Howard gets in. He's still got three games left uh, until he, uh, you know, uh, without losing a red shirt. Of course, uh, Auburn is a dumpster fire. They're counting down the days to when they make a move on Harson, And then the big one after that, uh, Tennessee uh, in, in Tiger Stadium. And so 
Uh, I know a lot of you were uh, updating your one loss record after the Florida State loss. Um, but I think, I think you've probably done it again and are probably also thinking had LSU played Southern first uh, and played Florida State week two, um, that, that, that might have actually have been a win. Um, so it's amazing how a lot of fans' outlooks have, have changed in the last couple of weeks. And, um, look, there's still some issues for, the, for them to work out. I still think special teams are shaky. Um, you got a left tackle and a right tackle that are true freshmen. Um, Mason Smith had surgery this morning. Everything's successful there. Um, but uh, Jacoby and Guillory and Wingo have stepped up. Uh, I like what I'm seeing out of Savion Jones at defensive end. I really want to see him get, get more reps. Um, I think he's uh, – I don't want to say he's, he's more effective than Ali Gay, um, but he, he is absolutely very dynamic. You, you guys who have watched this show for several years know how high I was on Savion Jones coming out of St. James. So, all right, guys, let me get, get, let me get to some more of these. Um, uh, how's it going, Mike and Buddy? Of course, you see, as you see, Buddy's not here tonight. Um, looking forward to seeing Banks in action Saturday. Yeah, I saw him um, – in the back of the end zone Saturday night in street clothes wearing an LSU jersey and uh, looked like he was really doing a very good job of meet and greet with all the recruits that were there uh, uh, for the Mississippi State game. And there's going to be another uh, nice group this weekend. Um, and so uh, I think, in fact, let me pull this up for you guys. I, I, got, uh, I put together some recruiting notes um, that uh, I want to go down some of this before we get out of here tonight. Um, but, uh, you know, one of the top quarterbacks who's already been on campus uh, already uh, in Julian Sain of Carlsbad, California, uh, he's coming in this weekend. He's a high four-star kid that Joe Sloan loves. Uh, LSU's already uh, – Coach Sloan, Dem Brock, they're already doing a bang-up job recruiting class of 2024 20, uh, quarterbacks. Uh, had a nice group in, in the summer. Um, Glad to be off work for a change and catch your show, Mike. Hello, everyone. Glad to have you in Nurse Court. Uh, let's see. American Patriot. Hey, Nurse Court. Uh, Nurse Court's got a lot of fans in the chat. Um, Alley Boy with a let's go. Um, I wonder why Daniels got the game ball over Ward. Um, I, I assure you, Jay Ward got a lot of attaboys. Harold Perkins is a scholar athlete of the week. You got to love seeing that out of uh, uh, him this week. Um, of course, Matt House got the game ball uh, on the defensive side of things, and, and rightfully so. I think, um, and, and no doubt, uh, Jay Ward uh, with 11 tackles uh, had an amazing game. Major Burns with an amazing game. Uh, that defense kept that LSU uh, football team in that game for in, in, in order for the offense to find their way in the second half and uh, go, you know, Put up, go 31 to three uh, for that entire uh, second half of football. I will say though, I don't know that I, I like winning the toss and electing to receive the football. I think I, I disagree with Brian Kelly on that one. Uh, I like to I like to get him to talk more about that um, uh, as to why he thinks that way and what what the analytics are on that. Um, yeah, Mike in the chair in the building, Golden Boot Pod. Uh, there you go, Pooh Bear. Um, Marcus Freeman, our defensive coordinator, got the other game ball. It's no knock on Ward, exactly. Uh, Daniels had a good game. Man, I, I, I'm, I'm so high on, on Jaden Daniels. Uh, I think he's going to get better each and every week. The more confidence he has in that offensive line, um, no doubt Emory Jones and Will Campbell are going to take their lumps. They're going to look like world beaters and future All-Americans at times, um, but uh, they're also going to take their lumps. And so I think – I think as Jaden gets more comfortable, and he's you know obviously has a, 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 something very good going with Malik Neighbors. If he gets it going with Butte and Thomas, uh, everybody's clamoring for more Jack Besh. Uh, obviously, Jare Jenkins has been uh, fantastic. Um, I just think uh, th th that's going to get better each and every week. Um, the more time that he has in that system with those guys, uh, the more experience and confidence he's going to get. Um, hey, Mike, we need to see more of, of John Emery, but what running back do you think has the most promise? I was high on Armani Goodwin. If you saw Buddy and I's practice reports all through August, I thought Armani, Good, Ar Armani Goodwin was the best that I had seen out there. Um, 
And, of course, he broke a, a really nice one off. I think Emery uh, looked pretty darn good coming back, uh, being a little rusty. And, you know, let, let's see him, uh, you know, get back in there. And, of course, we'll see what uh, happens with, with Noah Kane uh, the, the rest of the way. James Phillips, is the number of recruits allowed in the class still 32? Um, we were told by an LSU source, I think, two or three weeks ago that the number was 26 to 31. And so as you have uh, attrition, um, do you add one and you go 32, 33, 34? Is that how it's going to work? Um, and then uh, I think it probably is. I think, that, I think when, when the dust settles on the high school signees and the transfer portal signees after the spring, I think you'll probably be in the mid-30s. I, I, I believe that. Um, yeah, Huey Lipsy, Drew, Drew Brees on campus today. He should hang around a bit. A few pointers couldn't hurt. I, I really was, uh, you know, I don't know who was standing on a crown, but uh, one of the photos that LSU put out was uh, Walker Howard's back to the camera and Brees standing in front of him. And um, uh, I wanted to shoot uh, Jamie a text saying, look, Walker's uh, taller than Drew Brees. Um, we're, we're always joking around about uh, Walker's height and 6'1". And, um, of course, when he's got a full head of hair, he might be 6'3". Um, uh, fire 3449, Mike Gray showed us Kentucky challenge Georgia. Uh, I don't think so, but I really, uh, I really do like uh, that Kentucky football team. And uh, – They've done a fantastic job up there, uh, bring, making Kentucky uh, a tough team to get out. Um, but look, uh, I, I know a lot of people would love to see see that happen. Um, Huey Lipsy, the show is the best. Thank you, Huey. Uh, uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, special teams, what changes are they making? Yeah, Bill. Um, look, I. I when you've got uh, Jenkins and uh, Chris Hilton and Jack Besh, uh, Butte, Malik Neighbors, obviously Malik Neighbors had his difficulty, and, and they've gone in a different direction there. Um, then you've got other guys on the defensive side of the ball, other athletes. Um, many of uh, the athletes on both sides of the football in high school did, were, were on special teams and were punt and kick returners. Um, I would love to know what Coach Polian, who all he tried, out there in the spring and through fall camp, um, you know, I, I, I just not to take any slaps at uh, walk-ons, but usually, it, and if you're not going to get a, a dynamic, you know, guy with four-three speed that you know all it takes for one, the first guy to miss and he's going to do some damage, like we saw Trey Palmer do several times, um, I just soon have a guy back there who's sure-handed, uh, is going to feel the ball. Um, and maybe make some things happen if he gets the right blocking or if the punter uh, outkicks his coverage. Um, but, look, uh, they've got to get the ball out the back of the end zone more consistently. I think Bramlett's, uh, get, uh you know, had uh, some decent punts. I don't know that he's where he thinks he wants to be. Um, obviously, they fixed the issues on, on field goals and extra points. Um, but... I just wonder if that's all that he has to work with on special teams as far as return men. To me, that's still the, the number one issue on the football team is special teams right now. Um, uh, Thunder Road, Scone and T-Bob show sent us here. Ray, uh, raid incoming. All right, good stuff. Uh, American Patriot, I enjoyed the Josh Williams interview. He praised his teammates, and it wasn't all about it. He was fantastic in postgame, too. Uh, I love Josh Williams. Very humble. Uh, you're talking about a guy who had scholarship options out of high school, chose to walk on at LSU, was bided his time. If you heard, I'm the one that asked him the question about what it's been like um, being coached by Frank Wilson. He gave props to T-Rob and Kevin Falk. And uh, I think he he's um, – uh, you cannot – uh, help but like uh, Josh Williams. Um, hope he has uh, a more success uh, for LSU uh, the rest of the way. Uh, Barry Barbier, Frank Wilson will always keep LSU's recruiting at a high level. Uh, I think he does a good job, obviously. Um, I think Joe Sloan does a fantastic job. Kane, 
uh, and on and on. I'm not seeing where there are any slouches on the, on this LSU coaching staff. And I think the proof is really uh, in what you're seeing in 23, of course. you got a, a recruiting class. It's either fifth or sixth in the country, depending on where you look. 22 commitments um, and some very, very nice – uh, possibles and probables the rest of the way they can fill it out and keep you secure right in the middle of that top ten and maybe securely in the top five, uh, depending on on how well you do there. Um, I think that would be a, a fantastic call, and it's going to be for the class of 23. Um, but what you're seeing for 24, the kids coming in from faraway states on their own dime, coming with their parents, uh, seeing the two kids from IMG come last weekend, Quarterback coming in this weekend. Um, I like what they're also doing as far as really keeping an eye on some of the 23 outliers in the state of Louisiana. Um, I like the fact that I've seen the coaches out when I'm out. Um, I got to tell you, the last few years of Orgeron, and probably really a lot through Orgeron, and Miles had a bad habit of as well, they weren't sending coaches out in September. So who do I see the first Thursday night game? Frank Wilson at the Liberty game, and uh, it, that blew me away. Uh, next night, Joe Sloan was at Zachary. Um, so, um, there you go. Um, any buzz on Hilton? What about tolling at linebacker? Um, I think Chris Hilton, look, man, um, I know Coach Hankton really would love for Chris Hilton to be the next Jamar Chase, uh, Justin Jefferson, He's got the speed. He's got the athleticism. Um, and is it, is it that whole deal where he's, you know, had a regular issue with soft tissue injuries? And is he going to at some point become a full-blown football player uh, and not just a track guy uh, playing football? And um, physically, I like how far he's come since he's been at LSU. Um, but I, I would like to see more of him. So for – all the media who were and, and, and callers saying we're you know what they need to get Jack Besh more involved, you know is it next week more people are calling in and saying what, what are you going to do to get Chris Hilton involved? So you know Brian Kelly I think gave a little coach speak today on the SEC uh, teleconference. Um, you know you got to get your playmakers involved, but again who are you going to sit down? You're not going to sit down Brian Thomas or Malik Neighbors or Kayshawn Butte or Jare Jenkins, and. Um, you want to rotate him in. I think Jack Besh is devastating on third down. Um, but if you, if it's third and four, I want Jack Besh in there. But if it's third and 12, um, you know, maybe do you want some more of those guys who are legit 4-4 four, four guys uh, out on the edge um, uh, and guys that maybe, you know, can do more uh, after the catch. I think that's the dil dilemma that they've got. And then also we're wanting to keep a tight end or two uh, on the field depending on down and distance. So, but – also, Jack has, has been hurt, and you guys know I'm a best guy. I mean, I, I, I want to see him get some more, some, some more opportunities like everybody else. But it's, it's, I think part of it is an embarrassment of riches and also, uh, at times, the offense struggling. Um, Trucking with Casper with a super chat. Thank you, Trucking with Casper. Uh, hope to see Kayshawn be more involved and improvement from J.D. on his accuracy. Great to see you, Mike, and missing Buddy. Buddy will be back next week. Um, yeah, I, I, I want to see Kayshawn uh, have the type of season that we, that we expect him to have. Um, and we're going to see how that, that pans out in the coming weeks. Obviously, Malik Neighbors is, is, is right now uh, playing like he's LSU's number one wide receiver. So that's, that's kind of a good problem to have if you can get uh, Butte uh, doing what uh, you expected him to do on top of what Neighbors is doing. Uh, fire three four four nine. Hey Mike, any word on if LSU is going to use the white or permal helmets like they have done in the past? I have not heard anything. I'm assuming there's going to be a a could be a special game in there, um, but, but but I haven't heard anything yet. If you guys have seen something that I haven't, please please put it in in the chat. Um, Mike, how well do you think Denbrock's play calling suits Daniel's skills? Um. I think it does. Uh, I, I, I will say, though, in the first half, I, 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 I didn't like as many of the first down run play calls that I saw. Uh, I think LSU needs to throw it more on first down early. Um, I thought maybe that was a little conservative. I think LSU can open up the run with the pass. Um, and so, but, you know, that's, 
You can't have, um, you know, <laughs> false start penalties, and then that changes everything. Um, let me scroll down. Is Noah Kane at the bottom of the chart now? He's got zero carries against Mississippi State. Yeah, I don't um, – let, let, let's see what happens this week uh, as far as Noah Kane. Um, Harold Perkins is a stud, absolutely, says Chad Ortega. Um, Cam, what's the latest on the progress of Peyton Todd? As a West Monroe alum, I've been antsy to see our guy. You know, I'm scratching my head on that. He's, you know, obviously he came to LSU hurt off of an ACL, um, but he's now been in the program for two years. Um, I filmed him against Alexandria, and he was booming in pregame. He was booming during the game. Uh, I saw him another time. I filmed him twice. Um, uh, he's got a whale of a leg. Um, how consistent is he? I, I'm not sure. Um, you know, that's going to be very interesting to see once Bramlett's uh, done, what what – what direction does Polian go in, um, you know, with his own specialist, uh, wanting to bring his own guys in? Um, but, you know, he's uh, – Polian has talked very highly uh, of Peyton Todd, so uh, we'll see. But, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm wonder, I, I do wonder what, what Peyton's future is. Super kid from a, from a super family. Uh, loved his parents. Um, Trucking with Casper with another super chat. Harold Perkins looks like he will be a bona fide star. Yeah, and you like seeing that uh, he's he got a scholastic uh, uh, note today, um, scholar athlete of the week, um, and so that's that's even uh, even more fantastic. On top of uh, seeing a raw kid like him get thrown into action and uh, just make it make a go of it, and you know what what's what's the um, the ceiling on that kid once he learns the offense? I mean, learns the defense, learns where he's supposed to be. And um, and it just starts clicking for him because he's already operating uh, at a high level, um, just just extremely raw. Um, and there's a good chance that he, he might actually be the best running back running back on the football team. Um, but I, I do like what we saw out of Armani Goodwin uh, and a little bit of Emery uh, last week. Barry Barbier more like more than likely New Mexico may have a difficult time covering the LSU receivers. So let's see. If Jaden Daniels can spot the opening, the open once before he takes off and runs, that would build confidence for him. Yeah, I mean, if that starts to click, like Barry's saying, uh, for Jaden Daniels on top of what he's already doing athletically, uh, LSU's offense is going to be hard to deal with. So, knock on wood, that LSU offensive line stays healthy. Those two freshmen at tackles uh, get better each and every week uh, in time for the meat of the schedule. Um, the running game uh, starts having some success, and uh, Kayshawn Butte becomes the Kayshawn Butte that uh, we know he is on top of what they're already doing at wide receiver. And Mason Taylor, Mason Taylor, you know, get big, bigger and better and stronger. you got a lot of fantastic freshmen that are going to get better each and every week. And so I think that that's another part of the reason why you should be very excited about what's, what's coming down the pike for the LSU football program uh, between the newcomers you're seeing play right now and what's coming in the recruiting class. Um, Bill Frere, five-step drops are killing us, and I've yet to see a quarterback throw it over the middle. Yeah, I'd like to see some, uh, you know, intermediate uh, passing be a, a, a lot better because he has – there has been some open receivers without a doubt. Um, guys, we do this show each and every week with the, the big help uh, from our title sponsor and the official roofing company of TigerBait.com. Uh, let's hear from Alex and Mike. Hi, I'm Michael. I'm Alex. At Pride Roofing, we handle commercial and residential work. TPO, shingle and metal inventory. We, we got, got it. it. Property still in disarray from the recent hurricanes and hailstorms. Insurance claims? No, no problem. problem. But you know Pride Roofing is the official roofer at TigerBait.com. In fact, notify TigerBait and we'll give you a free roof inspection. And on top of that, you get a free year subscription. Call 855-PRIDE-16. Se habla espanol. There you go, Mike and Alex. Uh, those guys were out at uh, Tiger uh, Stadium tailgating, handing out free koozies and other stuff uh, on Saturday. Uh, they're going to be back out there for several other games. Uh, I'm going to find out where they're at so you guys can swing by and say hello and, and get whatever free koozies and, and what have you that the, they're putting out there. But as always, guys, they're still running that promo. I've got two more guys to uh, get free uh, premium subscriptions. They called the 855-PRIDE-16 number. 
commercial or residential and at, got a free roof inspection. And because they said they heard about uh, pride from Tiger Bait, they're getting Tiger Bait premium free for a year. That's a $99 value free. And Pride Roofing is paying the bill. So give them a call, 855-PRIDE-16, anywhere from Orange, Texas, uh, all the way to the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. Of course, real big on the North Shore, right there on Florida Boulevard in Albany. Swing by there, say hello, take a look at the premises. Um, uh, It's amazing what uh, Mike Faraday and Alex Martinez have built with Pride Roofing. Um, He just showed me four new trucks that they uh, uh, got outfitted, getting bigger in, in, in Lafayette and um, much bigger in Baton Rouge and in surrounding areas. So give Pride Roofing a call. Um, let me get to some more of um Yeah, trucking with Casper with another super chat. How about Emory Jones with the best tackle all game? I need to go dig that photo out. There was a photo on the wire service of um, Emory Jones, and he was absolutely horizontal. It was reminiscent of that famous Jacob Hester photo against Florida. Uh, back in 2007, but it was Big Emory Jones. And, um, uh, look, that's the kind of kid we knew he was going to be. Um, he's a big body kid, uh, but he can move. Uh, he's an honor student, and um, the sky's the limit for him, just like Will Campbell. And um, you got to be excited about that. A local Baton Rouge uh, kid actually lives uh, – his family lives right up the street from me, not far. And um, uh, I- I'm loving seeing him have success. I, I just wonder, had he been a midterm graduate like Will Campbell, uh, might he have, have been a starter week one against Florida State? I think he could have been had he been a midterm graduate. Because I, um, I think Coach Brad Davis um, and, Brian, and Brian Kelly would have, would have recognized early on, and I think he would have been ready to roll. Mark J., I feel very good about every position on the offensive line besides right guard. The line could be scary by November with more repetition. I, I agree, Mark. Um, bro, Jaden had a cut on his eye. Yeah, man. Um, I'm filming that. And if you saw my postgame interview with Jaden Daniels, you know, I'm, I'm holding way up here and I'm not wearing my glasses. If you guys see the drive home, I'll, I'll, I'll wear glasses. Um, it wasn't until I got home and loaded his postgame interview into the computer that I saw the gashes on the side of his head, man. He, he, uh, he, uh, he is, he is tough, man. I mean, um, he takes some hits and he just keeps on, on going. But I will, I do wonder, it, it, did they, uh, Stringfellow, uh, if you notice, Jaden's always pulling his pants up every game. Does it, does he, does he need a, a tighter belt? Is he wearing a, a size pants? Is he losing too much weight during a game? I don't know what it is, but um, he's always hiking his pants up. I hope he don't have a, a, an incident like Burrow in, in Starkville where he, uh, he gets pantsed. Um, that was hilarious. Um, we have no chance, but he could be great if he threw the ball on the run more. Yeah, I, I, there's a lot of things that if it uh, start to click for Jaden in the passing game, um, he's going to be a guy that I think could really move up some, some NFL draft boards. Um, and I, he's a tireless worker in the off season. He's going to get outside help. He's going to go uh, to George, uh, uh, Palmer's uh, deal in California and all that. Um, he's going to put in the work. Um, boxing basics. How is LSU's recruiting looking for next year? Is it a top 10 class? Well, you got five commitments right now. It's real early. Um, but I think with what is in Louisiana, the, the quality of the kids that they're bringing in from out of state for next year, I think LSU is going to be similar to this year, maybe even higher in the top five. I think you're going to see back-to-back years uh, where LSU is right in the middle of the top ten or higher. And that's where you need to be. Um, but, again, it, because it's Louisiana, you're going to run into situations where there's going to be multiple positions uh, where the state's not going to give it to you, you have to go out of state and get them. So we see Jamar Kane go out this year and get four. There's a couple of guys that we're keeping an eye on in the state of Louisiana that maybe could uh, earn uh, offers late. Um, but um, if they're not here, you've got to go out of state and get them. And so Coach Davis has to get some uh, to go to put his solid group together. So does Jamar Kane, um, and they're beating the bushes for cornerbacks everywhere. 
Um, American Patriot with the super chat. Why did they put Walker Howard in against Southern? Yeah, and to hand the ball off. Wasn't that a waste of talent? And look, I, I, I've been thinking about that this week. You know, it, New Mexico obviously is a, is a better football team than Southern. Um, but if if you're gonna if you're gonna get able to get Jaden Daniels out, let's say early in the third quarter, and you're gonna give Garrett Nussmeyer the rest of the third quarter and a portion of the fourth quarter, and you've got a big lead and you're not wanting to throw the football just for sportsmanship's sake, don't burn that that second game on Walker Howard. Uh, you don't know what's gonna happen. Jaden Daniels running all over the place; he could get hurt. Um, you know. Uh, save those those three games so he can keep his red shirt because you might need those at the end of the year. You just don't know what can happen. We saw it happen last year. And, uh, you know, let's say something were to happen to Jaden uh, in late November. Um, or, or maybe Nussmeyer, if something happens to him. Um, you want to be able to play Walker Howard in the bowl game if, if need be and, and, it not, and not be playing that whole game do you burn a red shirt for it. So don't play him if you're just if he's just going to come in and hand off. I agree, um, but if you're sitting there in November uh, and you've got some leads and he's only you know played in one or two games, uh, go ahead and put him in. Get it, give him give him some some experience, but uh, don't put him in there just to hand off. I, I just I, I I don't I don't that doesn't make any sense to me. On one hand, he was excited to get in against Southern. I assure you. Um, but if he's not going to throw it throw it around and, and have an opportunity to complete some balls. Don't 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 burn one of those four four games. Um, Kenny Mack four hundred nine. Jaden will get better every game. I, I think he will, and I think uh, this team will get better each and every week. Um, but the competition is going to get better each and every week too. Um, Mark J. Great show. Hit the like button, guys. Yes, please do, guys. Yeah, you you guys have been phenomenal helping us with the YouTube algorithm. When you when you hit that like button, if you're enjoying the show. Uh, it, 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 what that does is it tells YouTube to put our show in the recommended video for when you guys go down YouTube rabbit holes and uh, are watching football-related content, regional guys, national guys. Um, they'll know to, to put our show uh, up for, uh, for other uh, LSU fans. And so that, that helps us, guys, big time. Um, due to Rick's 12, I'm not worried about the offense at all this season. I'm looking at defense. I want LSU defense to be feared again. It looks like House is the guy for the job. Go Tigers. Um, you know, we, everybody likes lists. And so everybody's going to say, well, who's the best recruiter on the staff? Who's the best assistant coach on the staff? Who's the best, who was the best hire that Brian Kelly made? Um, I think there's a lot of damn good coaches, position coaches, coordinator spots. Um, but there's no denying what Matt House is do, doing with that defense. And I think he's doing it with some guys that maybe um, aren't what you would typically see at LSU at a certain position. Um, but I tell you what, he's dialing it up. And um, if that defense doesn't perform the way they did uh, Saturday night, LSU doesn't have that opportunity to score three touchdowns in the fourth quarter to win the game. Um, uh, I, I, they had to have been aggravated in the first half coming off the field and, and the offense not doing anything and them being right back out there. Uh, but kudos to that group, the, the coaches, the players, the entire defense. That, that's LSU football, what you saw at that Tiger defense on Saturday night. Um, uh, Y'all keep neglecting the fact that Mississippi State's wide receivers had a plethora of drops that would have been first down. That needs to be corrected. Yeah, um, but, you know, why, why are they dropping balls? Um, how hard were they getting hit? What were they anticipating? Um, you know, L LSU had their, their, their share of mistakes too. Um, I do agree that J.D. is our best chance to win, says Trucking with Casper, but I believe we are overhyping him. We have played none of the big boys, and I think he's going to get embarrassed when we do. Um, man, I I think there's a whole lot of reason to, to be I don't want to I don't want to say overhyped, but I think there's a lot of reasons to be excited about Jaden Daniels and his ability. Um, I, I keep flipping this around on on people and saying if that was if if you're a Mississippi State fan Saturday night. 
how aggravated are you when you think you've got a three and out and, and here comes Jaden Daniels just all of a sudden saying, you know what, uh, no, I'm going to get the first down and doing that over and over again and extending drives. It, th- that is crushing. And so if he can get the passing stuff down and the intermediate throws, um, start throwing the ball more on first down, I, I think Jaden can, can have some more success. Um, I, I, I like what he's doing. Um, I don't know that I'm overhyping, but um, I think it's a collective. Uh, that offensive line needs to uh, uh, gel. you got some new faces there, some issues. You've had different lineups every week. Um, if they can stay healthy and get better every week, um, that's going to help everything. Running game, Jaden, uh, the works. Um, after last week, Florida and Arkansas are definitely beatable. Yeah, I mean, where's else you going to be when Tennessee comes to town? Um, and how rocking is Tiger Stadium going to be for that one? And uh, if LSU wins that one and, and goes to Auburn and wins with that dumpster fire, um, LSU's going to be right where probably most people that were in the Pollyanna category uh, where, y'all, where, where everybody thought they were going to be. Um, James Phillips, are there any must-have recruits left in this class from Louisiana? Yeah, um, we don't talk about him a whole lot because he's been committed to Texas for a while. But, but I think you do everything you can to try and flip Derek Williams from Westgate. Um, you know, you've got uh, Curly Reed out there from Lake Charles Prep, who they, they brought in for a visit. Um, but are there some guys out there that don't have offers from LSU uh, that, that could, could end up getting them? Um, you know, let, let, let's, let's, let's wait and see how, how that, that's going to play out. Um, um, I really like the cornerback at Southern Lab um, that's uh, right now committed to Baylor. Uh, Carl Williams, the fourth, he's got speed. Um, you know, uh, I know a lot of people think maybe is, is – I think there's some debate being had about well, the wide receiver Harvey Broussard at St. Martinville. Um, you got a couple of kids, kids at Shreveport. Um, Northwood to watch out for. Um, I don't think LSU is going to make a move on Williams at Zachary. Um, let's see what else I got for you. Um, yeah. Um, I think a lot of it, though, is going to come down to the, the remaining of the high school kids. Uh, you, the top of your list, obviously, is Toviano, and I put in a prediction to LSU to him, for him uh, a week or so ago. So, um, He's going to take visits, but I think LSU's uh, uh, where he's going to end up. I think they've done a fantastic job recruiting him. And uh, my good buddy Jason Howell uh, over at Tex Ags, of course, many of you knew him as a regional guy for rivals years ago. Uh, he, he went and filmed him uh, two or three weeks ago, and um, he is a fantastic defensive back. Uh, he's the type of defensive back that you're used to seeing at DBU uh, every year. Um, Titus Showers, Mike, you told us that Emory and Campbell were special and both are living up to the hype. Uh, they absolutely are. And uh, I think Hurd at Neville, who's already committed to LSU, I think he's right there in that same echelon of those guys, maybe a, a tick back. Um, but he's raw. I mean, the sky's the limit for, for Lance Hurd up at Neville. Um, so th- that's the key. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw it. We were at Zachary on Friday night. We did a bunch of ISO uh, footage on Tyree Adams, LSU's other offensive line commitment. I think he looks darn good. Um, I know a lot of people uh, maybe were kind of uh, thinking he, he, he's um, maybe has hit his ceiling. I don't think he has. Um, and so is there maybe one or two other guys uh, in, in the state uh, that Brad Davis uh, might look at late? Um, you know, I keep talking about Fields over at Dutchtown. I'd like to see him one more time. I saw them in their uh, – it was either scrimmage or jamboree with Plaquemin. Um, um He's a bigger guy. I know Coach Davis and Brian Kelly prefer to go with your leaner offensive lineman that might come in at 260 and you need to put 30 pounds on them rather than guys that are 340 that you need to take 30 off of. And so – but he's a hard worker and um, – 
currently committed to Purdue. I think he's going to have a lot more other suitors by the end of the year. Um, so I, I hope to see him again here soon. Um, I tell you where I was last Thursday night. If you're a subscriber to Tiger Bait, you saw my interview with Harlan Berry from St. Martin's Episcopal and the footage I shot of him. He is an amazing running back uh, right there in New Orleans. Class of 25, LSU offer, A&M, Ohio State, and, and others. I think what Tennessee came in today or yesterday uh, with an offer. Uh, fantastic kid. I watched him walk across the field in post game, and shake the hand and, and say good game to every coach on his own. Um, uh, co- great parenting and um, had all five touchdowns for St. Martin Episcopal. Um, reminds me a lot of Joe McKnight. You guys have heard me say it uh, when I've talked about him already. Go to Tiger Bay. That's, you can still find that on the front page. Check out his footage. He had every touchdown for St. Martin Episcopal uh, against Riverdale. Um, uh, I, re- I want to see him again before the season's out. Um, if you're in the New Orleans area, um, go check him out at St. Martin's Episcopal. I think you're going to like what you see in him. And Frank Wilson is doing a darn good job with him already. Um, is Adams and Hurd midterm grads? Good question. Um, I want to say uh, Lance is. Uh, let me find out on Adams. I, I, I don't know the answer on that. I should know that, but I don't. If one of you guys knows it in the chat, please post it. But I'm not sure on, on Adams. I'm pretty sure Lance is. Um, all right. We need to go back to heavily recruiting Dallas and Houston. Uh, they're there. They're, they're there. There's, there's uh, more than a few assistant coaches that are working Texas. Um, Coach Cooks, Steeples, uh, they're, they're all out there and others. Um, they're recruiting, they're recruiting uh, that Dallas and, and uh, Dallas especially. That, that area is getting hit pretty darn hard. Yeah, what's the latest on DJ Chester from Georgia? That's another one I put in a prediction for LSU. Another fantastic offensive lineman. So Brad Davis is getting it done. Um, big time. Wish we could fit, uh, um, flip Omari Miller back from Nebraska, says Brandon Garner. Yeah, I, I'm not sure where Omari Miller is on this staff's board. Um, uh, I, I, be, uh, th- 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 I need to do some digging, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm not sure where Omari is on LSU's board, to, to be honest with you right now. Um, Nick Diaz, I've heard several media members. Uh, by the way, Nick, thanks for uh, being on Preston's show last night. Um, I've heard several media members say they've been told Walker Howard may get reps with the second team over Nuss against New Mexico. What have you heard? Um, I haven't heard that. I, man, you're really – there's a catch-22 there. Uh, a lot of us that uh, have watched Walker since ninth grade year – are dying to see him and, 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 and have an opportunity in a game with the first team offense and, and, and get a chance to show what he can do. Um, but man, it, it's, I don't want to, I, I don't want to burn that red shirt. Um, I just don't, um, you know, how's this thing going to play out? You know, when Jaden Daniels was signed by LSU, the, the, what was being said was, that Jaden's going to come to LSU because he's already played multiple years of college football. He's going to come to LSU, play one year, and go pro. If that's still what he plans to do, and if he gets better throwing the football each and every week, you know, does it get to a point with Jaden where he is what he is? You know, and does he go out after this year? Um, we got Ricky coming in, Ricky Collins at midterm. Um, you know, how do, what, what does Nuss do? Does he immediately hit the portal? So that would leave if, – if he does – if he were to hit the portal, then you've got Walker and Ricky, a redshirt freshman and a true freshman. So that tells me that in the transfer portal, Brian Kelly and Joe Sloan and Denbrock are going to need to go into the portal and get a quarterback that's got some, some experience because I don't think you want to go into the 20 – 23 football season with a redshirt freshman and a true freshman. No way. So there's still some scenarios to play out here. Um, um, And then what do you do if Jaden comes back? 
you know, we'll see. Um, don't they get up to five games and still red shirt? No, it's it's four. Um, unless you guys are hitting me with something, another something that uh, I missed or a change, but it, it's supposed to be four. Um, uh, boxing basis. Can LSU compete for a national championship next year? Um, I wouldn't put it next year. I would be looking at 2024. But look at the history of LSU football uh, this century when they win national titles. It's always in an odd year. Do they break through uh, and, they, and, and they're uh, in the hunt and, and it can make it happen in an even year? We'll see. Uh, I don't know that I start thinking that way and thinking that LSU is a, a four-team playoff team until 2024. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, maybe, the, maybe it comes early. You know, you, you, not only do you have to look at LSU situation, but you need to look around you. You need to look at that schedule. What do you guys think of that for next year? And you need to look at what uh, is happening at all your peers. What, what's, you know, what's Auburn going to look like? Who's going to be their coach? You know what Alabama is going to look like. Um, you know, does Pittman uh, continue to build what he's building at Arkansas? How do they finish this year? What all do they lose? Um, Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss are always going to be a problem. Uh, he's got that offense. Um, but I, I say 2024. Um, yeah, I talked about that earlier, normal guy. Is Julian saying visiting this weekend? Yes, he is. Um, and this will be his second uh, visit to LSU. And uh, Joe Sloan has done a fantastic job, as has the entire uh, LSU uh, recruiting staff with him and all the others that they've been bringing in every weekend. I, you know, at the end of games, I'm sta I stand in the back of end zones. Um, I check in in pregame. Um, I'm seeing the operation, the way that LSU football coaching staff, the recruiting staff, uh, Belton, Wilson, uh, on and on. Uh, those guys are, are doing a, a fantastic job. And plus, um, all the, 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 the females that are in the, in the department that uh, get the name tags and – uh, all the logistics, it, it's, it's a well-oiled machine right now, guys, I'm telling you. Um, and I think it's going to get better every week as this new staff. Uh, I, I think they, they've got a, the lay of the land pretty darn good already. Um, yeah. Um, let's see here. All right, guys, it's that time of the night. I want to talk about my dear friend uh, Tony Freeman with Assurance Financial. Um, if you're thinking of buying a new home, refinancing your current mortgage, but haven't found a lender you can trust, let me tell you about Tony with Assurance Financial right here in Baton Rouge. Dear friend of mine and someone who many of my friends have used for their mortgage needs repeatedly, her knowledge in over 25 years of experience in the mortgage industry is unsurpassed. She offers a wide range of knowledge of home loan products, whether you're a first-time home buyer ready to buy a new home or you just want to explore your refinance options Tony can guide you through your next mortgage experience. You can feel confident you're making the best financial decision with Tony as your guide. Not only is Tony a huge LSU fan, but Assurance Financial is a proud partner of LSU Athletics. Call her today at 225-239-7150. Again, that's 225-239-7150. And tell her you heard about her from TigerBait.com. NMLS number 104765, Equal Housing Opportunity. 70876. Nobody better than her, and right now is when you need her. Uh, the Fed just raised interest rates again, and uh, she's going to be the person uh, that's going to get you the best rate, get you closed on time, and uh, chase down any additional paperwork you need. And not only is she licensed in Louisiana, she's licensed in surrounding states. So it don't matter if you're in Mississippi, Texas, Arkansas, Alabama, uh, give her a shot. Let her, let her earn your business. Um, she's going to call you back immediately, and she don't play. Um, absolutely love Tony Freeman and Insurance Financial. All right, guys, let's see. Um, due to Rick's 12, if J.D. can play one year and get drafted, LSU will have a great season this year. I would like him to come back unless Walker is really ready. Um, I tell you what, there's going to be a situation – Let's say Jaden comes back. How would Brian Kelly handle that quarterback competition in the spring? I think he's got to throw it wide open. But if you, uh, you know, I, look, there, there's so many scenarios left to play out. It's so early. Um, 
but um, Walker Howard's going to push. I'm, I'm just letting you know it. He ain't going to sit. Um, little her guy. All LSU fans are saying New Mexico Lobo is going to be easy win. It's not. Um, yeah, I think this is a, a, a better football team, obviously, than, than Southern. And uh, you better come ready to play um, um, or, 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 or they can cause you some headaches. Um, two and one right now. Um, Jared Addison wins the Natty in the Dome again. That's when we'll make it. There you go. Um, I don't think there's one coming to the Superdome for a while, is there? Uh, now that you bring up that question, I don't think it's going to be in New Orleans for a while. Uh, and Doug knows, how are we feeling about the DB? Seems like Steeples, Cooks have maximized what was available. I think they have. And currently recruiting to the DBU standard. Uh, that's I'm with you, Doug. That's what I was saying earlier. Um, I like what they're doing. I like it who they're also taking hard looks at. Guys that don't have offers yet. Um, we'll see. Ricky may be a diamond in the rough. I'm talking about Ricky Collins. Um, guys, I'm scrolling down. I want to get to as many as you guys are before we get out of here tonight. Um, Fire three four four nine three hundred eighty one watching. Only twelve likes. Hit the like button. Yes, yes. Please do, guys. Listen to Fire three four four nine. And please, guys, go to Tiger Bait. Uh, look, we do a lot of work on Tiger Bait. We cover a lot of recruiting. Uh, I'm out. Uh, we've got, uh, in fact, this Friday night, I think there's three cameras out at different games. I've got a lot coming your way uh, in recruiting coverage uh, in the next week. Nobody does prospect video like we do. And uh, I think you're going to like uh, what we've got uh, coming all season long. Go to Tiger Bait, subscribe. You can try us out for $1. And like I always say, choose the annual package. Um, you're getting three months for free, essentially, when you do that. You get our text alerts for breaking news, our newsletters. Um, I'm on our Tiger Den premium message board day and night. Go on our Tiger Den message board. Uh, put a mic question mark. And uh, any questions you have there, any day of the, or, or, or night, uh, as soon as I see it, I'm, I'm going to reply and, and, and get you an answer. And uh, we've got a lot of great uh, other subscribers on the board that uh, for great conversation. Uh, I, I, I really am prideful of the fact that on, on Tiger Bait, we don't have uh, any knuckleheads uh, and, a, and a lot of trolling and fighting on our message board. Um, although sometimes I do think we could use a little bit of that. I will say that uh, to spice things up. But um, uh, though, though my long-term subscribers, that doesn't mean I'm, I'm bringing Yat66 back. That's not happening. Um, Nurse Court, I would definitely take JD over Nuss right now. No comparison, or we aren't one and zero in conference play this evening. I, I'm with you, Nurse Court, uh, but I'm also a Garrett Nussmeyer fan, and um, you know, I I, I want to see him get another opportunity because I, I I think he's chomping at the bit after uh, the way he played against Southern. I, I think he's I think he's chomping at the bit to uh, get 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 an opportunity and, and, and have a better showing. Um, yeah, there you go, Nurse Court. That, exactly. Save Walker. JD could be hurt. No telling what happens. Yeah, I, I don't, don't. Again, uh, like I said earlier in the show, don't put Walker Howard in the game with five, six minutes left in the fourth quarter, and say you're up by 35 or 42 just to hand off because you're not going to throw the football. Keep that that game in your pocket in case something happens that uh, you cannot foresee right now. Um. Yeah. Uh, Russell Rung, if uh, Jaden comes back, I hope Walker doesn't leave. I don't see Walker leaving, um, but look, he, he's, he, he bided his time at St. Thomas More behind uh, Holstein, and um, he, he's used to waiting. He don't, he don't like it. He's a competitor. Um, but believe me, he, he's, he's – He's going to uh, expect that uh, quarterback competition to be wide open and, and there for the taking uh, in the spring. So we'll see how it plays out. 
Um, got that one already. Um, yep. Yeah. yeah, talking about DJ Chester, Barry. Yeah, I, I've got a prediction in on him myself uh, a week or two, maybe two or three weeks ago. Um, James Phillips, great show tonight. Mike, very informative. Thanks, James, big time. Thanks for the nice comment. Um, well, the crime rate with the crime rate in New Orleans, you won't have any. You won't have to see any type of championships there. Yeah, it, it, that's everywhere. It's Baton Rouge. Something's got to be done, guys. I, I know it's a sports show, but um, um, you know, it gets so bad where last night I go to to player interviews. And I'm sitting in my car. I'd called in a, a pizza order to Red Zeppelin. And I'm sitting in the parking lot with the motor running because it, it was going to take 30 minutes before I'd hit the drive through window. And I'm sitting there thinking, it crosses my mind. And it, 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 just sitting here in my car with the motor running, could someone come up and put a gun? To the, you, you start to think that way. You know, are you putting yourself in harm's way um, if you're parked on a side parking lot? Um, and I think a lot of people – in, in, in Baton Rouge and in New Orleans feel that way about uh, the cities right now. I'll get off my soapbox for that. Okay, guys. All right. G guys, go subscribe. Thanks to all you guys for participating tonight. We'll be back next week. Buddy will be back with me. Of course, Preston on Tuesday night, our post-game show Saturday night. Loads coming your way on Tiger Bait, recruiting updates, and more. Uh, big visitor list uh, going to be posted. And so uh, thanks to all you guys for tuning in tonight. Spread the word, like, share, hit the uh, subscription button, notification bell, and I'll see you on Tiger Bait. Good night, everybody.